So you're welcome back. Uh, it's still the AM show. Time now for us to talk on AM Talk. And I've been joined in the studio by uh, an educationist, Dr. Ahmed Jinapo. Uh, he will shortly be joined by Philip Langdon, a member of the New Patriotic Party. And uh, together we'll be having some interactions uh, on the current happenings, things trending in the political landscape in Ghana, across Africa and the world over, I must say. So, Mr. Jinapo, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, today is the 31st of December. Let, probably let's start off on that note. I'm sure you, you, you'll be going for some of the crossing overs or the jumping overs or the scaling overs or something. Oh, not necessarily. But uh, mm. let, me, let me use this opportunity to wish uh, Ghanaians and most importantly viewers of uh, Joy News uh, Merry Christmas and an upcoming New Year. Sure. I think uh, the year uh, has moved so fast. Uh, if you sit back, you can recollect a lot of things that happened last year. I think uh, 2014 has been quite a challenging year for us as a people. Yeah. Uh, if you remember, I mean, during the beginning of the year, we had all these uh, issues pertaining to the instability of the city. You know, uh, cost of living has been quite high. Uh, for the first time in this country, uh, we had uh, workers uh, going on a nationwide stri uh, strike and demonstration. But uh, Notwithstanding this, I think the Ghanaian or the good people of this country have shown resilience and they've shown that, look, at the end of the day, uh, we may go through some challenging times, but we are prepared to, to, to stand up for our nation or our motherland, Ghana. Mm. So moving forward, I hope that 2015 becomes a year that we are able to address most of these challenges, even though there are signs. You look at even this uh, energy crisis. For the first time in the history of this country, this country is able to pump its own gas. Mm. You know, Atuabu gas is online as we speak. There have been a number of infrastructure developments, but there needs to be an agency. There needs to be an agency of, of, of development in the sense that every Ghanaian wants to have a comfortable lifestyle. We are not interested in living in opulence or, I mean, we just want the basic necessities of life. We want good water, good running water. I know there's a story on water here that we are going to talk about. Mm. We want electricity. Uh, we want jobs and we want security. That's what the ordinary Ghanaian wants. And I hope and pray that 2015, most of the challenges that we faced, I hope we do not go through them and at least we are able to solve them. But whilst we hope and pray, I think uh, I'll use this opportunity to, to entreat those who have been vested with power, those who have been given the responsibility of managing the affairs of this country, to work harder, to work more harder because. Uh, uh, we are in a competitive world. If you look at Ghana, Ghana is now becoming a hub where most people from the West African South region are trooping in. And I think we should be the beacon of hope and the beacon of uh, uh, developmental aspiration. Uh, the Ghanaian can do it. I mean, 2014 undoubtedly has been quite a, a challenging year, but I think uh, it's, it's, it's provided us a platform to show that, look, the Ghanaian is understandable. He understands and he's prepared to, to more or less to leverage with, with government or whoever is in power uh, when uh, crunch comes to crunch, you know. So we don't hope or we don't expect these challenges. I mean, this dooms or dooms or thing has to be a thing of the past. It's, it's I mean, it's, it's not in the interest of a country like Ghana where we have uh, such a challenge. It's, it's the major challenge now, you know, and I think we can solve it. And I'm hopeful that uh, we, we solve it. Uh, apart from that, I think, uh, uh, let's let's wait and see what happens. Mm. But at the end, we we are all hoping for the best. I see, that was Dr. Zina Paul with a quick review of how the year has been so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quick, quick review of that. But now let, let, let's move to something that happened yesterday. I yes. mean, we could we could start off with that uh, in Gambia, yes. another African state. Uh, Yaya Jame, we are told, was almost overthrown in a coup d'état. Uh, isn't this becoming one too many? I mean, some of these things. Well, we can't I, I think first of all. Uh, if you look at uh, what has been going on in, in Africa of, of recent, uh, you look at uh, the uh, Arab Spring, where we had uh, people like uh, the president of Egypt, uh, Mubarak, after being in power for decades, being overthrown. You go to places like Algeria, Tunisia, and even just our backyard, Burkina Faso. Blaise Kampore has been in power for way too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jamel was in power since 1994, yeah. 20 years. So at the end of the day, when you sit down and you, you more or less uh, reflect on what is going on, some of us uh, do not, I mean, condo coup d'etat. But sometimes you are tempted to say that, look, 
some of these coup d'etats that have happened have happened uh, for the benefit of the people. Because the Jamia has openly said that, look, he's going to rule Gambia for billions of years. Billions of years. It's, it's I mean, I'm happy that the, the coup was foiled because at the end of the day, I mean, people should try as much as possible to use legitimate means to what? To remove their government. But in a case like the Jamia's issue, you can't do otherwise. That is why I went back to say that, look, in this country called Ghana, especially in 2014, notwithstanding all the challenges that we've gone through, we as a people have come to terms with the fact that, look, democracy is the only way out. At least since 1992, we've changed two successive governments. Mm. 1992. 1992, some of us didn't have the opportunity to vote because we were not what? Uh, we're not by age, you know. But 1992, even though we're entering into democracy, people were skeptical that, look, what is going to come out of it? Because Rollins had been in power for what? For 11 years. He was a very powerful man. He won the elections. And even if you remember, the stolen verdict and the NPP boycotting the elections, you know. But 1996, I mean, things changed. Even though Rawlings won, the opposition became what? A force to reckon with in what? In our political dispensation. 2000, the NDC was kicked out. 2008, the NPP was kicked out. So the Ghanaian has always been covered that look, there is always an opportunity to change a government if you are not happy about it. And that is supposed to be the way, you know. So when I hear people making a comparison, I mean, saying that, look, what happened in Burkina Faso may happen again. I say, no, 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 no. I mean, the Ghanaian people are different from the Burkina Bays, just as we are different from the Gambia. But our system is one that, look, it's not the best. But I can say that, look, in Ghana, even though we've had challenges with our democratic dispensation in terms of elections and stuff like mm -hmm. that, it's, it's among the best and it's, it's always shown evidence of growing. But you look at 1992, we were using this black box. The opaque box. I mean, people were using, what do they call it, uh, ID cards that did not have pictures. pictures. You know, 96, there was a change. It was a you black know. and white picture. Yes. Hmm. I mean, in 2012, 2012, the Ghanaian or the, 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 our democratic dispensation was tested. It went to court, you know. People were, 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 were relaxed. The case traveled as it should be. And we came out of court and we are a people, you know. Hmm. So... I, I, I strongly believe that in 2016 will be an improvement on what happened in 2012. And 2020 should be an improvement on 2016. You know, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, who benefits? Is the Ghanaian or the ordinary Ghanaian who, what, who benefits? But uh, I, I think uh, sometimes our leaders, I mean, I'm even hearing signs that in Togo, you know, Yadima uh, 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 I'm hearing that his term is supposed to end, I think, next year or whatever. I'm hearing signs that he wants to contest again. I don't uh, think... There, there, there's some constitutional amendment being proposed. Also. Being proposed, and I don't think that is the way forward. I don't think that is how it's supposed to be. Because, look, governance should always and has always been in continuum. There's no way that one person can do it all. You know, if you are given a two-term limit. I mean, even a first term, four years, you should be able to show signs that, look, this is where I'm going, and if given the opportunity, this is where I'll take you people to. Mm. In eight years, you should be able to, to do whatever you want to do. So why would there be any constitutional amendment? And I think Togo should take you from what is going on in Gambia and what has happened in Burkina Faso. And whilst I say they should take you, I think our leaders should always and try as much as possible to be assertive when it comes to these issues. Because they don't do anything until the same. Are you trying to tell me that they did not see what was going on in Burkina Faso? They didn't get the signs that this was going to happen? I mean, you look at what is going on in Togo, don't they see that, I mean, something of this sort could happen? So, I, 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 I mean, I'm happy for this country. I'm very, very proud to be a Ghanaian, and, and I, I, hope, I hope we get the best. See. Well, I'm, I'm told we, have, we are facing a, a, a couple of challenges. Uh, so we'll go for a quick break. and We'll be right back after this. Once we are back, I'm sure everything will be sorted by the technical team. We'll be right back after this. Okay, so welcome back. And uh, thankfully, the technical team has managed to uh, resolve all our issues that we had. And uh, thankfully also, we have been joined in the studio uh, by a member of uh, the New Patriotic Party in the person of Philip Langdon. I introduced him earlier. Uh, he just joined us, and uh, I'll just quickly introduce him and get him onto the show. Thank you so much, Mr. London, for joining us. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. so just before we came in, I was having a chat with uh, Dr. Ahmed Jinapo, and we've been speaking on uh, the Gambia situation, the attempted coup attempt. Uh, wh why do you think 
some of these things are happening in Africa. Is it that our leaders are so greedy they, they never want to leave office? Is that the case? Well, uh, good morning to your viewers. I think uh, the situation in Gambia is a little peculiar. Mm. The African Union has condemned military <coughs> coups. And so there's no way the African Union is going to support any military intervention as a change of government procedure. But we have seen in the recent past some military takeovers uh, and then rather either a sub-regional grouping or the entire regional, the entire continental grouping will try and get the coup makers to hand over power to civilians as quickly as possible. But the situation in Gambia was such that Yaya Jame had virtually unlimited powers. There was nothing like opposition. He had in a very calculated and systematic manner dismembered the opposition. Any politician, even in his own government, who appeared to be gaining some uh, stature in politics, and he may perceive that this person could be a possible threat, would find themselves either under some corruption allegation, would be dismissed in some very, uh, not very uh, encouraging manner, a disgraceful manner, you know. So he, in the process, he was able to cow most of his government's appointees and ministers and all that. And he wielded such power. Uh, the way he went about governance in his country, <laughs> I mean, it, it was, uh, uh, you know, it, too embarrassing. A president wakes up one morning and declares tomorrow is a holiday. I want everybody to go to bed. A president decides he's found an aid, a cure for AIDS. So therefore, that is it. Anybody who on a sincere point of view says, oh, have this cure you've talked about been subjected to scientific analysis or something, the person is in prison. You know, things that we used to hear of decades ago are still being done in the Gambia. Now, the problem I will have with the Continental Union is that what were they doing? African peer review, what pressure were they putting on uh, Yaya Jame? Look, my uh, parents lived in the Gambia for some time, many years ago. So I spent, I had the opportunity to live there. I know a Ghanaian family who lived virtually next door to Yaya Jame. I know what he did to them when he became to power. What did he do to them? Well, they had a successful business. They were doing well, a very respected family, living their life like anybody else. But because more or less like they knew his, where he was coming from, or his, he made life difficult for them, to say the least, and they had to leave. Many people were chased out. Many people's businesses were destroyed, all because he, from his own insecurity. So Gambia, and if you remember, mm -hmm. some of the things he did, uh, banning some forms of clothes dressing and I mean he's done a lot of bizarre things over the years and has continued to do so. So although along the way Gambia has been able to mark some economic successes along the way, his own side of governance has not been good. And I think this school attempt was um, a, a, a natural response, reaction to what the people have been enduring over the years. Yes. The, the attempt was foiled. Yeah. Nonetheless, now, what are the possible implications of such a thing? You see, the sad thing about the way, from, from what I have heard of the story, the coup appears to have fallen because the leader has been killed, or the person who led it has been killed. Mm. Now, also, a lot of prominent members of uh, the Ayajame's uh, presidential guard have also been killed. Now, in the course of the coup, uh, there's Denton Bridge. Denton Bridge is the main bridge between Banju, the capital, and the rest of uh, the country. Mm. They have been taken over by the coup makers and their supporters. A lot of people in town had <coughs> come to help the coup makers to consolidate their authority. But it suggests, it appears to me that maybe the absence of the leader, you see, the absence of the coup leader made the coup makers lose some direction. Because I understand somebody else who went into a radio station to explain that oh, the coup is still on. When they asked him to mention his name, he was afraid to mention his name. Mm. So when you do that, it shows that the coup makers are not solid. They are not in control. So mm. that may then have given a lead, uh, no, an opening for Yaya Jame's supporters to take over. But like we saw in the Burkina Faso case, the fact that uh, the government that is supposed to have been overthrown 
may be seem to be getting con back into control does not necessarily mean that Yaya Jame himself has come back. So it may mean that, yes, the government has taken back power, but <laughs> Yaya Jame himself may not be. Uh, just like the Burina Faso case, sure. the, they took over, but then the leadership of the takeover also changed. So we, we could see that happening, this time in the case of the government that was removed as against the... the we are told at the time when the event occurred, uh, Yaya Jame himself was out of town. Uh, there are two reports. One report says he was in France, the other report says he was in Chad. Two reports. One said Dubai to... Okay, ah, see. So uh, apparently three reports. Yeah. So, uh, well, okay, I think for the one that is talking about Dubai, it was by a, spokesp a spokesman <coughs> uh, of the uh, French embassy or so, who mentioned that they were not aware that he was in France at the time. So now, he's saying he'll be coming back to the country immediately to ascertain whatever is happening. But, uh, Dr. Jinapo, let, let me find out from you. Uh, is it surprising that there are various accounts, various reports? In fact, initially, initially the, the, the uh, how do you call it, the setup, the government itself, not the president, but the government put out the information that no such thing was happening, there was no such invasion. And then, hours later, the president himself comes out to say, yes, indeed, there was an attempt, but we've managed to uh, foil the attempt. Well, I think uh, uh, as to why there are different accounts, as uh, Philip rightly said, even when it comes to these issues, normally it's the position that tries to put up the right information. But here is the case, uh, the, 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 the Janta became a, a leaderless uh, Janta, mm -hmm. in the sense that even whoever was supposedly taking over was scared of mentioning his name, you know. And uh, with such issues, there's always a lot of propaganda. Mm -hmm. and. That is one of the, 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 the arsenals when it comes to war. The, the first casualty in war is war truth. <laughs> you immediately are able to kill it. But I think as things unfold, we'll be able to get a true picture of what is going on. But uh, uh, with reference to the, the, the Burkina Faso issue, and when you pose it, the Gambian one within that spectrum, it looks as if it's a little bit dicey. We still don't know what is going on. Because I didn't even uh, cast my mind back to even there could be a change mm -hmm. in, in the, 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 the leadership structure of the incumbent. Mm -hmm. It's very, very possible because uh, what has been going on, but my, my interest and my concern is what is the ramification of this to a country like Ghana? True. And uh, each side, no matter where it goes, I mean, the consequences are not very good. Because let's say uh, Jamel comes back and being such a tyrant, he's going to go after whole lot of people. What measures and mechanisms are the international community putting in place to make sure that such issues are not, uh, uh, such issues do not occur? You know, what of if it's the reverse? This is a man who has been in power for so long, has been uh, one tyrant who has gone after, are those people, are the opposition also going to pay back? I think, uh, like it or hate it, uh, we as a people should take a cue from what has been going on. I mean, you can't stay in power for way too long. This guy has been in power for 20 years. You go to Burkina Faso, 20 something years. Uh, I made mention of Togo, what is going on in Togo. They want to change the constitution so that uh, the incumbent can, can, can stay again. Yeah. I don't think that is the way we need to go. Fortunately, on our part as a people, I, I doubt it if any president can think of amending the constitution of Ghana to, to go for a third No, 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 it, it will never happen. That is why initially I did indicate that, look, I'm very proud of our system, even though it's not the best. I'm proud of it because we've gone through challenges and we seem to be improving and we seem to be improving at a faster rate. And uh, I will call on the... the, the, the Gambia is not under West Africa. It's, that's West yeah, Africa, West Africa. Africa. And fortunately on our part, the chairman for ECOWAS is our president. Mm. And uh, I think uh, it would be proper if the chairman makes a statement to that. But of course. Lead, leading to yeah. my next question, yeah. what, what intervention do you think uh, His Excellency John you, you need to understand, look, needs to make? To, uh, Gambia is a sovereign country. Mm. That is one thing we need to know. It's a sovereign country. And taking example from what happened in Burkina, I think the president did very well in terms of how ECOWAS tried to manage uh, what happened in Burkina Faso. Because Burkina Faso, uh, I mean, they have a transitional government, you know. If it so happens in, Ga in Gambia that the president, the Ajame, is overthrown, the constitution is abrogated, then maybe the Burkina Faso issue will come in. But if he comes back as the president, then the constitution stays. Therein, the only thing that ECOWAS can do is try as much as possible to 
to, to leverage him not to go after uh, 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 those people. And I don't know what the constitution is. The constitution I know very well will indicate that, look, a coup d'etat is a treasonable offense. You know? So it's, it's quite a murky issue, and uh, let's, let's wait and see how things unfold. But I'm very positive that the, the, the chairman of ECOWAS, who is the president of the Republic of Ghana, will definitely be getting some information, and mm. they should be coming out with some strategies and mechanisms to address it. So, Hanley, what, what do you also think uh, should be the approach by ECOWAS in handling this particular situation? I, I, I think what made the, uh, uh, use the word success, the success in the Burkina Faso case was the speed with which the ECOWAS leaders the, 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 yeah. moved in. And look, let us be very honest. Another reason why they also moved in very fast was that uh, uh, Blaise Campari had a relationship with many of the leaders themselves. You see, so that was also another motivating factor. Yaya Jame, by virtue of the way he himself <laughs> has been behaving, does not have friends. I mean, let us be very frank with ourselves. He is not one of the leaders that uh, many of our leaders, whether in West Africa, the rest of Africa, or the rest of the world, uh, are so. A, 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 excited about, thank you. Mm. So I would wish that the speed and alacrity with which the West African leaders, led by our own president, went to Burkina to help stabilize the situation. They do the same in the Gambia. The Gambia is a much smaller country, yes. But let's not forget that the Gambia is in a volatile situation. Mm. They have a lot of problems with drug people trying to use their country as uh, a transit point. Mm. Uh, they are having issues of fundamentalism because of Yajame's own behavior, etc. It's close to Chad and all that. So if the ECOWAS leaders move in there fast and stabilize the position, first of all, if they are there and they prevent Yajame from coming, they declare that Yajame, where you are, stay. It's happened in many countries. It happened in uh, Mauritius, it, uh, uh, Madagascar, and other places. They should step in. They should step in and stabilize it because if it is not stabilized, the situation is very fluid. If Yaya Jame steps back into that country, look, it would be terrible. What Idi Amin did would be a joke. Mm. This uh, man who is because we are on a public platform, I cannot describe to you exactly what I think about him. I see. Yes. You see, so, and leaders like that, I mean, in this day and age, we don't, we, in this world doesn't have space for them. ECOWAS must step in very fast. The rest of the world must put pressure on Gambia, Senegal. And I know the president of Senegal, who also took an active part with our own president and the other West African leaders in stabilizing uh, 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 Burkina. Okay, so. I yeah. hope he will also be able to uh, lobby his colleagues, so uh, probably with UN help or whatever, French help, and move in quickly to stabilize it. Because if it's not stabilized, uh, it will be it will be very bad. I see. Very All bad. right.